Um, Axel, something that's happening now, not just in car design, but in, in, in you see it a lot in, in for example, sneaker culture, um, where you having collaborations between brands <laughs> and maybe individual artists. It's a nice way for um, a big corporation to to introduce some soul into their into their products, and and sometimes there's some very interesting results. Very famously, you, uh, Renault did this great collaboration with uh, Ross Lovegrove. Um, could you talk a little bit about that project? Yeah, well, maybe. I, I, well, that that is uh, one of the results of uh, his work, and I think it shows very much his his uh, philosophy and his interest for nature, endless interest for nature, and he takes that as his inspiration. Um, uh, you have to be careful that it doesn't become too flowery, too, too Undefined. yeah, bio design, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was maybe our part also to translate that into something which uh, is avoiding that, you know. I think it's still kind of a magic uh, wheel. It was done for the Twin Z uh, concept car uh, because that was the Twingo concept or project uh, as a concept or show car because at uh, we put that in, in, in our um, strategy for the car to play with, you know, in, in your life. You know, you have work that was frenzy before the car, Kangoo Glide car, but then you have to play again and, uh, or don't forget to play in life. And we decided, okay, that's the next generation of Twingo. Uh, and at that part of, of, of the, the timetable of the years, uh, we knew, okay, we were working on the new Twingo. Uh, so, but let's do two concept cars. One which is purely or more uh, product design orientated because that was a, a little bit what Lawrence was looking for for the Sorry, Twingo. Sorry, what time is this now? Are we 2012? Yeah, 11, 12, okay. exactly. And um, and on the other side, uh, well, we had great cars, uh, Le Petit Bomb, like the Renault 5 Turbo and the Clio V6. And well, Axel, you worked on the Clio V6 as a young designer at that time. So uh, let's find a way also to, to express that with this next Twingo. And who knows, maybe we do another mid-engine crazy car like, like the Clio V6 or the, the Renault 5 Turbo. Um, and we actually had a Renault 5 Turbo in the studio uh, to find the side modeling of the Twingo, you know, the Twingo 3. And it's true, if you put the car next to the shoulder, you know, it, there's an inspiration from the oh, Renault 5 Turbo. Yes. It came from there. Yes, you know? okay. Uh, we actually hesitated already at that time if uh, we should name it Sank, you know, 5. I mean, there were some, I mean, something Renault is doing now, you know, the reflection already started at that time okay. with that generation of the Twingo. Uh, at the same time, the name Twingo is so strong and so well known. I mean, it's uh, it's not an easy to this decision to, to give that up. You know? yes. So at the end, we, we decided to keep it. And yeah, and then that's where uh, uh, Roslov Grof tucks in because Anthony Lowe, um, uh, had um, another head of design. Um, uh, I think he had studied with Ross uh, at the RCA at that time. So they were still in contact and Anthony uh, suggested, uh, well, for this product design, because we are not so much into product design right now. It's actually, it's not really the philosophy, but um, so why not working with someone from outside? And I happened to knew, knew or know uh, Ross or Lovegraf. I think he's an interesting character. Let, let's invite him. Let's have lunch together. Yeah. So he came and, oh, well, you can't stop this guy, man. He was talking, talking, endless ideas, ideas, ideas. Um, I mean, reach out for the moon, you know. Uh, and then it was up to us to bring that into a, a car model. You know? <laughs> And that was another challenge, yeah. So it was quite challenging, I think, for both sides, you know, to be fair. Um, it was challenging for, uh, for Ross, I think, to discover even a professional design team in a big company with endless budgets, of course, uh, like Renault. There are some limits. And we had to make it clear quite often, no, no. 
we can go that far, but maybe not as far as you would like to see it. And uh, because it, 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 some of the ideas also were, and I, I won't, don't want to criticize him, but it was a bit blurred. And, and I mean, it's up to you then to, well, you're a genius, you can, you can do that. You know, it was a bit like that. And uh, I said, well, thank you very much, but uh, no, I don't really get it, you know, or I, I, don't, I don't know how I can turn that into a, a functional, real driving car, you know. So it was a challenging project, but I think at the end uh, it, it was fun. It was good that we did it. It was um, great to get uh, through him also and all his connections uh, with the product design world to Milan, to the Milan car show. Yes. Uh, not car show, sorry, furniture show, uh, furniture fair. Uh, I think it was one of the very first times where uh, a car was allowed to be shown there. Well, I think so. that that was probably, I mean, I, I, I can't speak for the whole history of automotive mm -hmm. design, but I think that that was also one of the first examples, at least that I know of, where they, uh, a car company was showing a, a, a car exactly. at a, yeah. a non-auto yeah. show. Yeah. And the idea behind for us was to la launch uh, an, an incredible amount of uh, a Serie Limité, a limited uh, series of the next Twingo generation. Right. Uh, some more product design orientated you know, with all kinds of uh, accessoires, you know, some more sporty orientated. That's where, where we did the twin run, you know, so we did twin Z. It was electric purely electric, and um, that was the car with Ross Lovecroft. Very minimalistic in the interior, very magic with lots of uh, la um, uh, features with lights uh, working in the roof uh, and the floor, you know, uh, the seat a bit done like a, like a tree, you know, growing out of the floor and uh, a, a lot of light work uh, features, the seat again. So kind of a magical car, you know, and clearly you, you, you see, well, it won't be on the street like that tomorrow. It was kind of this, this a bit wet dream, well, car, but uh, it showed the potential and it interested many, many people who don't particularly interested in cars. You know? Yeah, and, so that's, we, and that's, we, a, that's a great success. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was a was a very interesting and uh, challenging but interesting and fun experience. At the end, uh, I traveled several times to London, also working with his very small design staff, and um, yeah, so good one. On the other side, there was a Twin Run. Maybe we can speak about that yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, that of course was for me the. A dream come true. Uh, I mean, I admire the Renault 5 Turbo, well, like everybody, I think. And I worked uh, as a designer on the, the Clio V6. I, I did the design of the Clio V6. So for me, they have the opportunity to maybe to, to work on the, the next mid-engine uh, compact uh, car. Wow, that wow, was super, of course. Um, so through um, the Megane Trophy, I got had had got to know the uh, company called Torque in in France. Um, rather unknown, but they do uh, a lot of race cars, and they had there was a collaboration uh, with Renault Sport already for several projects, and they built the chassis for all the Megane Trophy race cars. So I thought about them. I thought, well, okay, do a, a real we, we we have to do a real racer something I can give John Liss or race drivers in the hand and say, here's the key, have fun with, you know, and obviously spectacular images later. And uh, so um, we built it up a, a package. Uh, we saw that they were working on cars, it's for ice sliding or Trophy Andros cars. And actually the dimensions were not too far away from our twin Twingo. And, uh, and they were mid-engine cars. So we said, well, could you build us a chassis which uh, basically has this technology but adapt it to our uh, Twingo car, or the silhouette of a Twingo. And of, yeah, of course, great, we do it. Then, uh, well, I had to find the budget. You know, it's, well, already, I mean, our administration was up in arms. Well, there's one concept car. No, well, actually, we're doing two. What? 
where, where, where is the money coming from? I mean, we have this kind of budget for all the concept cars this year and pff, to find a way, you know? But that's a good thing about Lawrence. He said, just start, we'll find a way, just start, you know? Because then also he could invite the right people saying, hey, look, we started with that. And actually this time, yeah, it's kind of exceptional, but we think it would be really cool to have two ones because later then we can all make, uh, do all kinds of accessoires and uh, small series and so on. Oh yeah, okay, okay. So, so he found the budget, you know, we found the budget. And um, uh, so talk started on, on that project and became a brilliant race car. It's really a race car. You can, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, I did some, some spectacular filming at, at Mollary, this old Formula One track near Paris with, uh, with the curves like that going up over the wall, you know. And um, so it was really spectacular, you know. And uh, we, the test drivers from Renault Sport, they did all the demonstration. Jean Ragnotti, of course, the, the hero, uh, rally world champion and ambassador still for Renault. Uh, he drove the car, he had lots of fun with. I mean, he's very well known for doing uh, 360 degrees, you know, and then, well, you do a 300, you're arriving very fast, you do a 360 and you just continue if nothing had happened, you know. So he did that in Goodwood also with a car. Wow. So all these cars, yeah, that's an important point also. We not only sent to the car shows, the traditional car shows, but to events also, you know. Desir was shown uh, in, in Goodwood. Uh, the well, basically, all these concept cars showed up in Goodwood and other events like in the that. Alpine as well, right? Yeah, 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 yeah the Alpine. Ah, yeah, the Alpine. We, we, we can talk an hour about that project too. Yeah, that's also just a yeah. magic, magic art. Uh, love that car. Yeah, thank you. Well, do, do you want to speak about it? Yeah, or? absolutely. Okay. Yes, yeah. Well, Alpine, um, that must and, and sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt. By the way, I'm not like a, necessarily a big fan of. French car design, but I that that those cars I absolutely love. I mean, yeah, I really really like it. So yeah, carry on. Well, that Alpine goes uh, the 150, the concept car. Yes, I mean, it goes back to two things. Uh, already when we started uh, with the Desir, uh, we had some sketches in blue because Alpine is new for blue. And it's this dream at, at Renault Design, at least, though every five years, I've been already at Patrick's uh, time, you know, we tried with the Alpine project. I was several times involved, you know. So when we started with Desir, of course, uh, the temptation was enormous to have a blue car and call it Alpine. And uh, it was, I think it was Lawrence who said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Not, not as quick. I mean, I think the company t can take a lot but right into the face, start with Alpine, which is a very uh, controversial, controversial uh, subject at Renault itself, uh, maybe for later, you know. Okay, we forget about that. You know? So we did this here. But then, uh, well, it must have been one and a half or two years later, uh, then there was this uh, opportunity. Uh, we noticed there's uh, the uh, 50 years of the 110, the old A110, the Berlinette, you know. So the celebration of that. So um, we had a meeting with product planning. And I think the initiative came very much from us, you know. Uh, shouldn't we do something? And yeah, well, okay, maybe. I mean, they were a bit shy about Alpine, you know, and uh, because there were so many, had been so many bad experiences in the past. I mean, project, Alpine project, projects had been canceled really a week before the show, you know, with a functional concept car, st Alpine standing there. Wow. And uh, so there was a lot of, of frustration also in the company towards that subject. And, oh, uh, okay, yeah, there's a birthday coming up. Well, you design well. Maybe you can do some digital work. You so, do so amazing digital work, you know, do some digital stuff, you know. And we said, well, maybe a bit more than that. And that's, I think, the moment where, where I tucked in and said, um, listen, I mean, I work on the Megan Trophy again. Uh, uh, and we're just doing this this uh, project with Torque on the Twingo. And actually, if we modify a little bit the chassis, I think it could fit underneath the Desir or the silhouette of the Desir. So, well, together with my studio engineer, we sat down behind the screen and we basically did an overlay, 
you know, of uh, because I have the files from the Megan trophy, and of course the digital model of the Desir, and well, there's not much missing. I mean, we have almost the same wheelbase and uh, uh, the roll bar or the roll bar structure in the Megan is too high, so we have to get that much much lower. Well, started started to discuss with Renault Sport. Do you have a Megan trophy sitting somewhere, you know, from the past? You don't need any more. Why are you asking? Well, we have, we have well, it's just an idea, you know, it's just an idea. Well, um, oh, whoa, 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 what are you doing there, you know? It, and, uh, well, can we, can we have a car, you know? Yeah, we have a demonstrator car, we don't use it, it's sitting somewhere in Dieppe, you know, but uh, no, 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 you can't modify that. And so lots of discussion, and that was my job, you know, to convince them in a way that at the end we had to buy the car, which is kind of crazy because you're in the same company, you know. I mean, I was at the point where I looked at eBay and Mobile.de and said, look, there's an old Megan trophy, we buy it, you know. <laughs> and then at Renault Design, they say, what? You, you, you want to buy something on eBay? I mean, are you crazy? You know, this is professional. And <laughs> said, yeah, well, but I need this car, you know, to start with, because we want to start on a, on, a, on a physical model, you know. And so after long discussions, and maybe Lawrence helped also a little in, on the back, and um, we, we bought this uh, Megan Trophy, and we got the green light. Yeah, we can do whatever we want with the car. It was still a running car. And so uh, it got shipped to, um, to Torque. They modified the, the, the upper skeleton of the car so that the uh, Desir silhouette could, uh, could fit. Uh, saying that, uh, well, uh, Jan again, Jan Jassalé, started to work on the design of the car to make it more radical, a little bit different. But uh, then lots of many discussions with a new CEO, and he helped us a lot, Carlos Tavares, um, an Alpine fan. Well, he's a racer, first of all. He's racing, true racing. I mean, uh, he has a collection of race cars. And uh, he'll climb races, but with Formula cars. I mean, crazy. He wanted to, to get Alpine back, you know, the name. He said, well, wouldn't it be great to have Alpine again in our range? And he said, wow, well, we are all for it. I mean, you're, you're asking the right people in design. And uh, so we showed him this idea of 50 years of the Alpine. We have an idea maybe that could fit and go for it, go for it. You know, uh, We found the budget, again, again, enormous discussion because this was out of this strategy. You know, didn't really fit inside, and so another car to do, another budget to find, and um, uh, yeah. So with a with a coach builder near uh, near Versailles, we we built the car, and uh, all in in carbon fiber, and again a functional race car, yeah. and uh, and then during all this building process, there were two things. Uh, where do you want to present it? Well, we present in Monaco. Are you crazy in Monaco? I mean, you will never get the, the green light from Ecclestone, you know, to present a car there. I mean, it's his world and to sneak in there, forget it. And so, well, product planning, marketing, you occupy yourself with that. It has to be presented in Monaco. I mean, the, the, I think we pronounce it once and everyone, yeah, it has to be in Monaco. Great. Okay. Uh, so that was one big thing. And the other thing, well, what is it? Is it a Renault Alpine? Is it an Alpine Renault? Is it a Renault uh, or just an Alpine? Uh, and uh, in the clay model, we were testing actually two halves for a long time. One which was just inspired by Alpine, so rather closed front end again, mm -hmm. with just the Alpine riding mm -hmm. and of course the double headlamps. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, um, it's an Alpine Renault, Renault Alpine, we didn't know yet, um, with our front-end identity from Desir, uh, with the headlamps of Alpine. Uh, so for a long time, it wasn't clear. Uh, then started all the discussions within the company, and you could feel a strong wind 
you know, that what Alpine again, again design coming up with Alpine, okay. Then they noticed, it's very much, you know, the middle management that actually the top one, he was saying, cool, yeah, let's do it. And I mean, that of course changed everything. Yeah. yeah. But for us, and I mean, I remember meetings where, I mean, at Renault Sport to, to in all fairness, they were not overwhelmed because they were afraid that actually what happened this year uh, or last year, that Renault Sport would disappear and then the sporty cars would be called Alpine. You know? That was the, the criticism all through all these years from their side, you know, where I said, well, with all the respect for the Renault Sport products and for your brand, doesn't it sound way more magic Alpine? instead of Renault Sport. Well, it's like what Volvo, sorry, what Polestar is to Volvo. Like, exactly, And it exactly. becomes its own thing. Exactly. Lexus, Toyota, and I mean, you, there's yeah. so many examples, yes. you know. And it, it was actually all, all, always awkward. Uh, it's a Renault, Megane, Renault Sport, you know. Uh, people uh, don't the, get it. No, like, no one don't get it. get it. And, I mean, I thought for a long time that, well, couldn't we make it just RS? It's a Megane RS. Oh, no, no, no. There are all kinds of right uh, legal issues, you know. Uh, it was Ford who had the right, exclusive right to that. I said, it can't be because in our case, RS stands for Renault Sport. Yeah. So we must have the right to just say R S because it's Renault Sports, nothing else. It's yes. not about racing sport or yes, you yes, know. Yes, yes, yes. Um, ah, endless fights about those things. Endless, endless. And um, but I think well, with the CEO Tavares, we we really, I mean, the most important person person was on board, you know. And um, so at the end, we decided maybe it's too risky even for him to say, okay, it's an Alpine, uh, we go for a uh, Renault Alpine. And so we choose also the Renault front end, this new front end identity okay. with, a, with, a, with a grill, the upper grill, not the closed front end, because we, it gives us this freedom to play around mm -hmm. also, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, yeah, what, of what also what we say to the press, mm -hmm. because that was also many discussions. I mean, what, what are we actually telling? And, before we started, I, I remember because I was part of uh, uh, in in the headquarter of Renault um, near Paris. There was a um, two monthly meeting about uh, uh, the uh, strategy salon about the strategy of the uh, the car shows. You know, very interesting because we got the feedback from the last shows. And at the same time, uh, marketing, product planning, Renault Sport and design presented kind of an outlook uh, for the next show, what we think could be interesting. You know, uh, A very important meeting because it was really at that moment decisions were taken. You know? And I remember still, I don't mention any names, but there was a meeting, crucial meeting for this A11050 and the head of Renault at that time, not the, the man be above him, you know, it, which was Tavares, because it was for the, or the brand responsible, yeah? Mm -hmm. the, because we had Dacia and, and Renault, you know? And he was not convinced. I mean, he was actually very afraid. He said, if you show this in Geneva or wherever, uh, well, the journalist will be so delighted and they will say, well, you have to produce that. So uh, I'm not sure we, we should do that car. You can show some images for the 50 years of the Berlinet, fine, yeah. But building that car, and I presume there were some discussions after that, uh, because I think Tavares was not part of that at that moment, in, 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 uh, at that meeting. So, um, yeah. Very good. Yeah. I, I, I was a little bit confused at, I mean, I love, I think both cars are great. I love that show car, the Alpine show car. <coughs> and then of course the production, uh, car, uh, that, 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 that Alpine has produced. Um, I like for me, th there was a bit of confusion 
as somebody that doesn't have any <clears throat> knowledge of the yeah. brand at all. Yeah. Because the two things are complete are, are completely different. Different, yeah. Uh, well, how, how can I say? Uh, it's true. I mean, uh, when you look back now, you would say, well, maybe we should have done uh, something which is more coherent with the old 110, you know. Um, but at that time, we didn't know where this adventure will lead sure. us, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. at that moment, it was still more important to tell something about the, the whole strategy, uh, maybe taking advantage from all the, the, the press, uh, uh, the media uh, returns uh, around Desir. Yeah. So saying, well, see, I mean, we do something with Desir. It was not just a wet dream car mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. it's well here we have uh, something which is clearly connected to that very first concept car this year mm -hmm. you know and so at that moment it felt right you know? um, also when we did this year and all this uh, uh, Carlos Tavares wasn't there yet as a CEO mm -hmm. you know it was Pelata uh, who was a little bit more uh, a bit more conservative about these sports car things and um, so many, I mean, it's, it's always changing the situation, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, when you look back, I mean, my myself, I'm now mixing up years sometimes, you know, and say, why, why, why do you, haven't we done it that way? It would mm -hmm. have been more logical. But, well, it has its, its reasons. At that time, it was, believe me, it was the right decision under the circumstances, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, then uh, Tavares, he, well, after long negotiations with the Formula One and even Ecclestone, we were allowed to do one lap in, in the Alpine to present the car there. Uh, lucky enough, uh, we were the supplier for Red Bull, uh, for the Formula One cars at that time. And um, Red Bull liked the idea. We invited uh, Sebastian Vettel to design. Got very excited when he saw the car, and well, the, I couldn't resist to to well to present myself, of course. Or Lawrence presented me to to him, and um, well, he comes from Heppenheim here, and it's just next to Heidelberg, you know, and it's twenty kilometers from here. Incredible. So, well, we we had a super nice talk. Uh, about everything, basically. Yeah. I mean, I think his press man is said, well, well, we have to continue. We have to go. We have to go. Ah, oh, no, no, no. It's so great here. And actually, he handed me over his his uh, his um, smartphone, you know. Oh, Axel, could you take a photo of me next to the concept car, you know, to the model, you know, we were of, of the A1050, you know. Wow. And first of all, you're in design. So uh, oh. photography is strictly forbidden. Mm, then you have all kinds of models standing. <laughs> so I was standing there, you know, security, not far away. Um, Vettel next, standing next in front of me, you know. Yeah, can you take a shot? Uh, yeah, yeah, I take a shot. Yeah, Lawrence is looking away. <laughs> I try not to capture anything which might be top secret. You know? yes. And um, you know, he comes back and says, don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm not on Facebook and all this shit. I don't like that. You know? Well, I hope it's still the case. <laughs> So, well, that was very nice. And so we had the, the possibility, or uh, Carlos Tavares drove the, the car. I mean, I drove the car to the grid, which was a thrilling moment also. Wow. And, um, well, then he had his lap in, in the car, really fast driving. I mean, my heart was... I mean, we, we had one try out before, you know. And, I mean, this is the CEO of Renault, and, yeah, and hopefully everything will be all right. Yeah. Especially in Monaco, you know, the barriers are here. Wow. And, um, but he, he, he managed very well. And, uh, actually, yeah, we invited him before for a test drive. So he knew, well, about the gear shifts, about this and that, you know. And... Uh, he first said yes, and then for all kinds of reasons, ah, sorry, I don't have time. Well, it will be Monaco then when I drive the car for the first time. <laughs> it was kind of crazy, the whole thing. Wow. <laughs> but it showed his experience, you know. I mean, I, 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 he came literally, he came to me uh, at the starting grid and said, so is it like the Megan Trophy, everything? I said, yeah, it's it identical. It's in Megan Trophy underneath. And uh, I, I know we should have met last week, but uh, sorry, Axel, it didn't work out yet. But okay, I will be fine, you know. And off he went. Incredible. <laughs> and then the car got lifted uh, with a crane on the barge of uh, Red Bull. 
you know, they come in with a with a huge uh, how do you say barge or a uh, container ship or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's a platform where they have their swimming pool, the dance platform, the discotheque, uh, the restaurant, everything. You know, so they lifted the the car top of that. We we got a special area. And that's where uh, Lawrence presented the, the car to the press in detail. Oh my um, God! Wow! And that was an overwhelming moment, and really also very, very nicely done from from Lawrence. I mean, the the main people who were invited, uh, designers, but also Cullen and Trim, so were on the boat from Red Bull. Where we were really together as a team. Yeah. That um, I mean, those sort of things don't really happen that much no, anymore, no. No. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. It, I think. Circumstance, you know, uh, it, it can happen. It might might happen again, yeah. You know? But it it's quite rare. Yeah. Axel, I I don't really like to try and like predict the future and like what is what is the uh, what are, what are the current uh, fashionable trends and whatnot. But I'm quite interested to know from a person as creative as yourself that is here, that that has led um, this great advanced team for 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 many years. What like where do we go to next so we if we like as as the the desire was in my opinion the the kind of fork in the road in terms of like bringing back voluptuous volumes the other end of the spectrum is again i'm going to quote the controversial cyber truck which is like okay now we're going completely square which is like also you know you could argue completely futuristic and we can talk about that forever but then like what what is new now like what 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 well cybertruck to to i have to, i have to say that okay. i mean i hope the future will not look like that okay i'm sorry to say i mean i have, I have a lot of admiration for elon musk and what he has done uh actually quite beautiful cars i think in terms of sculpturing and uh very nicely proportioned most of them um uh i think it was more about to provoke and he's very good in that, we know that. And okay, well done. But is that the future? I really hope not. Because for me, it looked very um, like a military machine, you know, uh, very aggressive. Also this idea with this steel metal and da da da. It's, I mean, it goes, for, well, maybe I didn't understand it, possible. Or it, it goes against everything. I, I was fighting for. I think in our world, I would love to see more beauty. I mean, there's so, so, so many horrible things happening in the world. At some stage, I don't want to listen to the news anymore. Uh, in my little world, maybe, what I can do to make it more beautiful, uh, I'm, I'm all for it, huh? together with a team or with others. You know? It was actually a very nice compliment from a Porsche designer at some stage, Matthias Kula. And after this, he discovered the, the first series of concept cars uh, through Lawrence, I mean, these concept cars, he said, oh, actually the, the, the automobile landscape is more, becoming more beautiful again. And I think also after the first Clio came out, so uh, where he saw, okay, it's not just a wet dream, it's the production line from Renault will be like that. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think there, there are some, some similarities between, uh, in terms of surfaces, uh, between Porsche and, and this, this Renault lineup. Uh, and um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, uh, I would like to see more simplicity also, because... Um, I think the the front ends are just so aggressive. It's all also the the proportions maybe from sheet metal to glass. Maybe it became a little bit too too much like a sheath shot, we say, you know, like on a on a on a military vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I understand. Yeah, I mean, the world is becoming a bit more aggressive, so people like to protect themselves a little bit more, which explains also the fashion about SUVs. Nevertheless, uh, oh, make it a bit more simpler and a bit more beautiful, I think. Um, uh, I, 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 there's, there's one guy I, I, I should mention, Jean Simeriva from Renault Design. I did the, um, the Zoe um, show car with him, the preview, we called it at the time. Because the, the, the production car was already in the pipeline, 
nevertheless, the uh, the shoka helped us to maybe simplify or find some some other solutions on the production car as well. Uh, I still consider the the Zoe production car, like this show car at the time, as one of the most beautiful cars on the road. If you see it on the road, for me, it's, it's expressing this kind of sensuality, at the same time, a simplicity. Somehow it feels electric, the car. Maybe it, 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 when I see it, it makes zzz, zzz. And um, so, yeah, so he, he did that and was, uh, was also part of my, my Renault Sport uh, group at the time. So a great designer and um, going everywhere. So he needs, a, I think, a design manager who, hey, hey, come back. And yeah, yeah. We, we make it like that. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, to find a little bit of this simplicity, if I look to the, I think at Ferrari, they realized it also, the Roma, the latest, mm. I think has, is very interesting. Beautiful. So it's, it's more this uh, Pininfarina way of, of looking at things, you know, it's kind of a simplicity, a calmness. You can look at it and say, oh, wow, yeah, you know, we don't need more. Axel, there was a th there was a theme earlier on that you were talking about with regard to um, the show cars mimicking moving towards a state where they are representing more about what will come in terms mm -hmm. of production that is not such a big gap what is do you think that a brand like ferrari that doesn't really well they don't do show cars do you not think that there's something inherently exciting about this is what we're doing and this is available and you can buy it now and it's ready to go what what are your thoughts on that? I'm not sure if I understand your question. Sorry. Okay, that was a very. I, I have a habit of do, <laughs> of doing this. But no Ferrari, problem. Yeah. no, well, Ferrari don't. They don't do show cars. Yeah. So yeah. you see this. You see this. This this beautiful the Roma, for example, mm -hmm. or 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 um, whatever the La Ferrari, and yeah. and that's the car. Right. And the first time you see it, you're seeing the production version and actually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you'll be able to buy that I yeah. mean, provided you meet their club mm -hmm. and, and whatever the case is. What, how, do you, do you not think that that is maybe a more exciting approach now? Um, oh, instead of making a concept card, just it, making the right product from the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes and no. I think... Um, well, Ferrari has the luxury, yeah, uh, of course, that they can uh, operate on a much smaller scale. So the investments, I think, are, are lower than uh, at a mass production car. Um, but at they, the same time, they, 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 sorry to cut mm -hmm, you off, but they, no, no. They, their risks are also, um, are also pretty high because they don't necessarily have the resources that a big OEM would have. Mm. Thinking, yeah. I mean, I was the first one who always said, uh, if you look back to the initial uh, concept car, I mean, yeah. a, a piece, of, piece of beauty at that time, you yes. know, really. No. Why haven't we built that as yes. the next upper class car? You yeah. know? And there were all kinds of reasons uh, told from, I must say, from our engineers saying, oh, no, 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 that's too expensive and that you can't do that. I, actually, I think it was a, a lack of confidence in the company. Well, basically, it's that. Because if you have a vision, you can change things. Yeah. I mean, like Piage at the time, you know, yeah. when the first aluminium A8 uh, Audi came out, wow, you know, they had a specific tire size at the time. Yeah. They found a supplier who said, okay, yeah, we do it. You know, might be a risk. We might not find the volumes you would like to wish, but um, hopefully this will set a trend, what it did. And uh, so in in the near future, all upper class cars will have this tire size. You know, it's this kind of thinking. And that was very often lacking at Renault. Yeah? They were afraid of of uh, doing that, that step, you know. We were very lucky with a Scenic, with a today Scenic on the road. Yeah. Um, we did this very nice concept car and everyone fall in love. It was actually a nice story also behind that because um, product planning at that time told us, oh, forget one box design. I mean, that's, that's over. That's no, no. Well, we have all this, this feedback from customers. They want to have a hood. 
Yes, but no, 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 no. Hmm. But for a family car, I mean, this, this one box thing really makes sense, you know? I mean, it's not just styling, it really makes sense. And we did it before with this bus and yeah, yeah, but people don't want that anymore. Look at the SUVs, look at Volvo and uh, True, I mean, they, they came up with that. So, um, so we said, we had to say, well, please let us do the scenic concept car because it f does fit in our strategy. You know, the couple finds together a family, still a sensational, uh, a sensual car, uh, but sporty, but a family car, you know, and we, we have a scenic in our range. So let's try an outlook on the next scenic. Product Banning told us, gave us a package, you know, with a hood. We said, okay, we put one design on that and, um, start with a one box design, the other designers, you know. And, um, and then when presented the model, uh, I presented to the, the model to uh, a woman at the time, uh, head of product planning. She said, oh, no, no, we don't want to, that we show that on, on, in Geneva, you know. And I said, to make it even better, I said, well, we also have a Alpine in, in the pipeline. Are you crazy? <laughs> Don't believe a second into that, you know. You know, I mean, comments like that. And at that point, I said, maybe you call Lawrence. And I mean, I, I, I'm convinced both things will work. Hmm. So we continued. I mean, again, at that time, uh, uh, the the company basically had no idea where to go. I mean, they were just followers you know, in, in, in product planning. And it's hard to say, but that's how I felt it mm -hmm. at least. Maybe there were some other talents hidden somewhere, but that's how I felt. And um, so, uh, and, and with, a, with, a, with a confidence and, and, and uh, backup from, from, from the CEO, I mean, Lawrence had a lot of uh, freedom at that time and we used that. And so we finally presented this scenic concept car in Geneva and we got this feedback from it was Pelata at, the, at that time. He has never had in all his life in the automotive industry such a positive feedback on a car. And people were saying, that is Renault. You know? We presented together with the Desir and the Captur and uh, uh, R-Space, we called it at the same time, yeah, for space, you know. And um, so from there on, uh, it was, okay, the next Scenic must be like this car. He said that also, try to make the next Scenic like that. And like all concept cars, of course, or show cars, well, okay, you have big wheels on that. So we tried with uh, this shape of the concept car to make a production car with our 16, well, let's say 17, maybe 18 inch wheels. It's just, just wrong, you know, proportions were wrong. And we were really lucky that at that time, Continental was developing for the electric cars, for the i3, I think, mm -hmm. uh, a new generation of tires, uh, very big in diameter, mm -hmm. but Low still profile. quite uh, narrow, you know, uh, at least in comparison to the height you know? um, or the normal size, you know. If you look at, to an i3, uh, you can see it clearly. It has 20 inch also, but I don't know, 185 or something. Oh, wow. And, so, yeah? okay. so in terms of proportions, yes. I mean, you have what you, what you dream about it as, a, as a designer. So we were really lucky at that time. Uh, the, the, the discussion started with, a, with the tire suppliers and, um, and they said, well, we have something there and that could correspond to, to you, you know. Well, the, the width changed from the one they developed for BMW, but that wasn't a problem. Um, but the, the diameter we had from 20 inch wheels. So with the Sedic, until today, you have the only car in that segment which has 20 inch wheels standard. Not an option, standard. And it's only this tire size, and it's not much, much uh, more expensive than other tire sizes because oh, that wow. was the deal from the beginning. We said, well, it, it can't be handled like a sports car where people are willing to pay. I mean, I don't know when they have changed the, the change their, their tires every, every season. <laughs> uh, okay. It's 2000 bucks. No, it has to be for family and it has to be a decent price. You know? 
So that was a deal from the very beginning, and they found a way to to correspond to that. The, the, so, the, the, the depth of the wheel probably helped as well, right? I mean, the fact that it wasn't so wide. Yeah, of course, yes, of course, yes. of course, of course. But then again, they took the risk that, uh, well, this will, a bit like Audi at the time, the only uh, company who will buy this tire from us, uh, which in the calculation for a tire company, of course, it's uh, it's not very interesting. You know? yeah. So I, well, found a way. And uh, uh, thanks also to the, our people from purchasing. And um, <clears throat> so the, we've, we really got the proportions of the of the concept car on the production car so and again coming back to the simplicity i think this scenic i mean maybe one of my favorite concept cars wow. because it had this simplicity in the body side very very essential I, I, sometimes maybe i'm exaggerating but sometimes i think or i said uh there, there won't be a, a a family car as sens sensual than this uh, again, you know. But anyway, so yeah, I I would fight or I fight for for some beauty in the products, and these angular shapes. I mean, I can see the the interest. I mean, it's uh, it's a change. It's different, of course. It's different, yeah. And uh, so it catches your attention, no doubt. But is it beautiful? Mm, I doubt. I doubt. Not for me, at least. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a it's a very controversial car, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Axel, I um, you you mentioned earlier on that Patrick um was a bit of a a mentor for you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I think that you said you also said that you spoke about your insecurities going into a. a, a a big design studio and you were maybe a little bit awkward um i wondered like if you w what exactly did you did you do to work on yourself to overcome those things well you're surrounded by uh, great talents and uh, they do inspire you you get some comments some respect some critics uh, so I think it's almost uh, natural. I mean, if it would have been uh, uh, too big as a problem, I probably I would have quit. Yeah, but I stayed, and then that itself probably showed that well, I got along with it. I adapted. I, I learned. I mean, you're never stopping learning, you know. Um, <clears throat> then. Clearly, with uh, I think I changed into management. Actually, rather late in in if you look to the the, the ladder, I mean, of the careers in in such companies, you know? um, a very few uh, designers who stay until their retirement as uh, creatives uh, in in terms of uh, still sketching, drawing, you know? and. Uh, and I think it's it's almost it's normal. I mean, I mean, either you again you maybe quit and you work freelance and you continue as a freelance uh, designer, you know, and but it's very hard, I suppose. Um, or you change into management, uh, which is not easy to change from a. a well, like I say, a true designer, because there are also other profiles, not not many at Renault, but in other companies, you know, they come, actually, they're, they're from the beginning, beginning, probably have a better profile as a manager or a salesperson or something like that than as a designer, yes. you know, but they have to go through that. And uh, mm, yeah, uh, but at Renault, the, I would say almost the rule was, well, you have to, to prove yourself as a as a designer, exterior, interior, also something I really liked uh, about Renault, or Renault design, that I could work on both this versatility, which is actually quite rare. I mean, and you're a big champion of that. Well, I'm not sure. If, no, I wouldn't call it champion, but I, mean, I have not, the possibility. I, I mean, the, no, no, no. I'm uh, not not meaning that you are the champion, but you champion that notion of. Oh, sorry. You're you're okay. a fan of designers doing both. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's very healthy because uh, the classic conflict, you know, between an exterior designer and an interior designer is uh, the interior designer says, well, I need this kind of headroom. Huh? And the exterior designer says, oh, no, 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 to have this line, you know, super sensual, sleek line, I mean, I have to lower the roof, you know, and I mean, it's, it's very simplified. But, uh, you know, a, and interior designer, it's a bit like a, and I think uh, Pierre would, would agree, it's a bit like a motorcycle designer. You have so many components to somehow either cover, you know, or to make it look nice, or to understand uh, the heaters, the electronic controls, the, okay, it's now maybe a bit more simpler because everything with like a Tesla, which I found too simple, simple the interior, you have it on a screen, you go through the menus. But I don't think that will stay forever because the car is moving object, you have to get a feedback without looking. I think. Well, I need it anyway. Mm. And um, so, um, so I think, yeah, it's 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 a great thing if if as a young talent you you like that. Uh, I mean, there are others uh, who just want to be an exterior designer or just want to be an interior designer. Fine, but to to. Uh, give the possibility to a young talent. Okay, you can you can hang up your your drawings for an interior and for an exterior the week after. That I think that's great, and that was the case at at Renault Design. Wow. So yeah. Axel, I we I could probably talk to you for a very long time, <laughs> but I think we've got to get out of your hair at some point. <laughs> we've already been with you for a couple of days, and I just. Um, I wanted to know what um, what advice you would give for for young kids starting out today and wanting to become a designer. Never give up, try, um, and I think it it well it shows also your. Um, I think there 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 should be a kind of an obsession, you know, like with every profession. I mean, you told us a nice story today about uh, your kid uh, uh, starting with drums. I mean, just he himself, he discovered that somehow. And I think it's like that with, with every uh, big or most of those talents, you know, they just started. I mean, like my school books were full of car drawings and not mathematics. Um, well, yeah. It's very often starts like that. I mean, you see it with, with Formula One drivers. I mean, nowadays, they, well, it's almost, they have to start with, with karting, you know. At the time, uh, it was rather exceptional. But it, um, so it starts very young. It shows very young. And true, later, um, yeah, for example, if you're really bad at school, I mean, try to find another way. You know, and you, because there will be one person in the world or, or several probably, um, who maybe through their own experience uh, see what you don't see. And they will give you a, 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 an opportunity, you know. I mean, I'm, I, I see it often at, at Fordsheim or, or other schools that, um, you know, when the um, Iron Curtain fell, when the opening of the East happened, I mean, there were several uh, young people from rather simple background, or I wouldn't say poor, but simple, very mm. simple, and uh, with not many resources, were coming to Pforzheim, and that's something I like a lot about Pforzheim, it's a public school, you don't have to be rich to do your studies there, and, um, and they were just, wow, mind-blowing. A talent, a, 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 a raw, ta raw diamond, you know, really. And um, very insecure, very shy, and those are the best, you know. And if you can give them confidence, if you give them a chance, yeah, invite them for an internship. I mean, they will be over the moon to discover that that world they were dreaming about, you know, a small part they, they dreamt about, and the rest of it they will discover. Um, uh, someone like uh, Dejan Denko for, uh, for uh, at, at Renault Design, you know, he did the, the with the help of, of Jan, he did the, the Alpine production car. I'm know? trying to get Dejan on you. Uh, He's t he technically uh, agreed to do it, um, but we, we're still working on it. We'll yeah, hopefully get should, it soon. You should. Um, 
I mean, guys like that, you know. Um, so yeah, what what can I say? I mean, uh, don't give up, and uh, well, sometimes be a bit uh, a bit bold, you know. Like uh, me when when I was calling uh, Patrick, you know, I just give it a, give it a try, give yeah. it a try. You, you, you. It's actually the discussion I have with my my children right now. You know, they're in their their early twenties, and um, give it a try. You you never know. I mean, someone else might see something maybe you don't see or. It, it might change the world, so give it a try. Thank you very much, Axel. It's been absolutely incredible being here and talking to you and seeing your beautiful place, and I can't thank you enough. And well, thank you, Sam, for for coming all this way. <laughs> I think it was a horror trip on the motorway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for all this effort, and, uh, well, good luck for, for all the, the other podcasts which will come, hopefully. Thank you. And uh, I think it well, was a great pleasure for me. Awesome. And, uh, all the best. Klaus, thank you very much. Klaus, yeah. Much same respect. to you. Mm -hmm.